Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome to the very first tutorial of ISTQP Advanced Test Automation Engineer. We are getting started with the chapter 1 which is introduction to objectives and introduction of course to the test automation. In this chapter we will be having two topics, purpose of test automation and success factors in test automation. So let's get started with the very first tutorial and the very first topic of this series, the purpose of test automation. In general, when you talk about the test automation, of course, we know a lot of things about what is test automation. When you try to automate something without having any kind of personal intervention. In simple terms, it's all about executing a test with help of a test tool where you instruct the test tool to do something for you on the application without having any kind of human intervention. Now, when you talk about having any kind of human intervention that means you do not interact with the product which you are testing so here is a piece of tool which generally understands your instructions in terms of the test script and you, it executes all your instructions and reports you back with an execution log that execution log contains all the information required for you to understand how the script executed on the product, whether it passed, failed, or any certain checkpoints and all. Now, considering at this point of time that you know a little bit of test automation to understand for the tutorials, but at this point of time, I can also say if you are a newcomer to test automation, it will be slightly difficult for you to follow all the topics because we are talking about certification and we expect you to have understanding of the automation already before looking at the certification. Because we are not going to talk about any kind of practical execution in this tutorial series, so make sure that you know a little bit of automation basics. So here the very first thing is about of course uh, getting a basic introduction to the test automation where we see that oh, what is the definition or what's the basic understanding of test automation and what exactly it takes a process of designing the test where which are required for the test automation. Just like manual testing you do have a lot of other things like the test cases, the test data and similar to that a lot of things. We do have similar concept involved with test automation like software, the software which you're testing, or the test tool which you require, documentation, test cases, test environment, test data, everything remains there. The only thing which varies is instead of writing test cases, you prepare test scripts. And instead of your personal intervention, you have a test tool with you. We'll learn more about test tools and definitely in the other previous tutorials, you've already understood what the test tools does and how many types of test tools do we have across organization. Now what do you mean by a test where and what exactly uh, the necessary activities for testing that is included as a part of test where. For example, implementing the automated test cases could be another thing. Monitoring and controlling the execution of automated test cases. Interpreting, reporting and logging the automated test results. So test where is actually necessary for the testing activities. What, testware, what is testware basically altogether? When you say testware, it means any such thing, any such ware, like, you know, when you say cookware, you have different wares which you use to cook your food, which are different utensils, different shape and size, which suggest or like which supports you with different types of cooking when you try with different ingredients. The same way here, the testware are different things which are specific to a particular recipe, which is your product. So what kind of testware do you need here and what are the different activities which why it is necessary for? Further, when you look into the test automation approaches for interacting with the software and the test, the SEO2 represents your uh, software and the test. So what are the different approaches, how you can interact with the product which you're testing or a software which you're testing? So of course, there are different ways a product can be approached when it comes to t automation testing. The very first approach is API testing where you talk about the web services. I hope you know a bit about API testing. If not, you can quickly scroll through the Google and just take a basic definition. What does API testing stand for? APIs are bit generally application programming interface and they deal with the web services, the creation of the intermediate commands between the front end and the back end, which is like the server and the client. So you try to interact with it. So testing through the public interfaces to the classes, modules or libraries of the SUT, 
testing through the user interface of the SUT, that is your GUI testing or CLI testing, testing through a service or protocol. So there are three different ways. One is the API, the web services. Second is the user interface. And third is the protocols, which are going to run that in terms of identifying, detecting, or uh, picking up the product in different port or networks. Now, what does the objective of test automation include? Of course, the test automation, now we know the basics definition, so it would be easy for us to understand what are the different objectives. What is the objective of our test automation here? We have improving test efficiency. Of course, it helps you run more tests more often, providing wider function coverage because the tool can do a lot of things which manually could be complicated. Reducing the total test cost. Of course, automation is faster than human performing tests that manual tester cannot perform. Of course, that's one of the other thing. Shortening the test execution period. Of course, yeah, when the test cost reduced, the time reduced, the cost also reduced, and the period gets shortened. Increasing the test frequency or reducing the time required for the test cycle. So putting it all over, you know, entire cycle time can also be reduced further. Now at the same time, once you understand the objectives, let's quickly look at the advantages of the test automation. More tests can be run per build. You know, you, you, know, you don't really have to think maybe if you take certain time, say for example, around five minutes to run a test, probably the automation tool would take only five seconds to do that job for you. So it's that quick. The possibility to create tests that cannot be done manually. There are certain cases we uh, manual testing is not possible or very highly complicated or it's very expensive just like you know executing a performance test for one lakh users i mean like you know half a million people would be complicated of course so that time we choose automation test run faster of course test can be more complex complex in the sense like you know doing it manually could be complicated so you can just write it in simple steps using a test automation too Tests are less subject to operator error. That means human errors. So you can avoid human errors because a tool doesn't do mistakes. More effective and efficient use of testing resources. Quicker feedback regarding the software quality. As it is fast, it is quicker to respond. Improved system reliability. That means repeatability and consistency. All those factors comes as a part of reliability. And improved consistency of the test. So system as well as test, you both have good consistency. That means no matter how many times you run a particular test, it will always give you the same results subjected the application is modified. So that's where we talk about the advantages. Let's move to the next. And here we're talking about the disadvantages. Of course, every good thing comes with some of the drawbacks or some kind of limitations which are involved with the product or any such product which you buy. So disadvantages of test automation include additional costs are involved. So these are like, you know, the pretty fair disadvantages, which you can understand they are not exactly disadvantages because we say that a tool, a test automation tool actually comes with only advantages as it is created for a specific reason or a specific level of testing or type of testing. Now, when you create such tools, then of course, and you have disadvantages, then what's the point of getting a tool for your organization? Now that's where we talk about the disadvantages in the fair terms. That means, what are the other information which you need to know before deploying a tool or understanding alone the advantages of the product? So, of course, it will invite an additional cost. It will initial uh, investment to set up tasks, requires additional technologies, team, needs to have development and automation skills. Of course, the team has to be upgraded with the understanding of the tool. It's not mandatory that all your manual tester knows everything. Ongoing task maintenance requirements, that is continuously upgrading the scripts, can distract from testing objective. For example, focusing on automated test cases at the expenses of executing test. So that's another story altogether. Well, we will be talking in more detail about each and everything what is mentioned here. So do not have any kind of, you know, thinking that I'm not explaining in detail how does that really impact or how does this really becomes a disadvantage. We will be talking in more detail about everything mentioned here. 
The test can become more complex, of course, that is another part of it. Additional errors may be introduced by automation. Now, that's a little tricky option that how additional errors may be introduced by automation. That means an add-on thing. Generally, it's seen that your test cases have less mistake compared to the script in terms of the variable or lag DD misfunction, third-party softwares which support you. So maybe the third-party software would have updated and your script is no longer valid for that. So there are a lot of errors. Errors, that means what do you write and you go wrong with that. You know? Human mistakes and certain things and your variable are no longer called or probably the object name would have updated. So it could be complex in the term. Limitation of test automation include not all the manual tests can be automated. Of course, if you are a good man automation tester, you understand that not everything what you see around you can be automated. So we only automate certain things which is capable of being automated or it requires automation. Not everything around you can be automated blindly. The automation can only check machine interpretable results the automation can only check actual results that can be verified by an automated test or oracle, just like a assertion or just like a checkpoint. Whatever you declare, an automation tool can only do that, nothing other than on its own. Uh, not a replacement for exploratory testing that requires human intervention and exploration. Of course, that's, that's one of the limitations. So I hope that was quite clear to you. We just understood the very first topic of this chapter one. So. We'll be back with the another tutorial soon. So should you have any query, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to assist you. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.